I don't like utilizing the word regret a lot, but I can regret it. Just alcohol, drugs, alcohol, drugs, just high all the time, working on the job site, driving machinery around, not my best moments in life, but that's how it was. Um, and then fitness saved me. Like fitness was the thing that like got me out of it. So I got into fitness and then I figured out how to optimize it. I was like, I love this. I now love how I look. I love how I feel. I love what I do. How can I help those people feel the same way? All the people that hated their lives and saw me quit, saw me start to step on stage, saw me transform, saw me look better in the mirror. They're like, how the f did you do that? So I started to teach them and help them. I just didn't do it for free. I figured out a way to monetize my passion. Fitness is the foundation of everything. Yo, what's going on guys? My name is Cole De Silva, Cole the Wolf De Silva. I'm 28 years old. I'm a seven figure entrepreneur. All right, running two seven-figure businesses, also amassing a massive social media following, motivating you guys to get off your asses and achieve your dreams. Welcome to the show, yeah, Cole. Well, thank you for We're so pumped to have you here. Thank you for having me. Honestly, walking around, just kind of like seeing the behind the scenes from after we've been working together for a while is very cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome, man. Yeah, welcome to Edmonton. <laughs> thank so, you. Yeah, but like you're just saying there, you're crushing it, man. Crushing in business, crushing in life. But it, it hasn't always been that way for you, right? Mm -hmm. So. Take us back to before you started working out, before the business. What was what was life like? Uh, that's a very very deep question. Uh, before I started working out and before the business, I was an iron worker. So I was working as an iron worker for around two to three years, and I actually became an iron worker because I was escaping my past from Thunder Bay, Ontario. Grew up in Thunder Bay until I was around 18 years old. Didn't really have a job. Did like like the bullshit crap that everybody does. Like worked at Walmart overnight stocking just to pay for alcohol and then drinking like crazy. Wanted to escape that life. Thought that becoming an iron worker or a laborer would help me do that. So I moved to Calgary. Uh, actually, after a crazy drink filled drug road trip, it was insane. Um, got an opportunity to become a laborer. And then it just kind of like trickled from there. Um, did really well for like the first year. Got to like work with my hands, felt like passionate, felt like a little bit of a relief from just the regular bullshit life that I lived when I was a kid. And then pain started to set in. So you guys obviously know, and you guys are gonna be able to figure out a little bit, I was addicted to Percocets for a long period of time, but that actually sparked because when I was an iron worker, my hands stopped working. Mm. So I don't know if you guys have worked in construction before, ever? Yeah, no? totally yeah. all the time. Yeah, all yeah. the time. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. You never well know, then. actually. Yeah. Oh, there like, yeah, you yeah. never know. Um, but I did, ironworking that was like the MBSE side. So it wasn't rebar and it wasn't steel. It was kind of a mix of everything. And through that, there's a lot of rattling. So I was always using like impacts and sledgehammers on the steel. And my hand would like vibrate like crazy. And it got to a point where I was waking up like this, at like 23 years old and I couldn't move my hands. Went to multiple doctors, asked multiple questions. And I basically got the same answer of like, go take some ibuprofen and fuck off, like get out of our office, like leave us alone. And it reached a point where I just snapped and was like, I'm going to figure out a solution on my own. So I went and found a dealer on the street, started buying Percocets from them. Long story short, I ended up walking around with a hundred in my pocket at all times. I was eating around four to seven a day and it wasn't like sporadic. It was more of like, let's chew up two in the morning, chug a Red Bull, sniff one off the beam. And then it just became my regular thing consistently, consistently, consistently. Um, and that was just like my life for like a solid, from what I can remember, because obviously my timeline is just completely screwed from that time, like around a year of just straight blur, just alcohol, drugs, alcohol, drugs, just high all the time, working on the job site, driving machinery around, not my best moments in life, but that's how it was. Um, and then fitness saved me. Like fitness was the thing that like got me out of it because before fitness, it was legit just aimless nights, working to 10 to 12 hours outside as an iron worker. And then I'd go straight to the bar, drink until probably 10 p.m., whatever, time was, maybe close at the bar, get home somehow, sometimes driving, sometimes whatever. Again, not proud of it, but whatever, that's the past. And then literally pass out, wake up at like 4 or 5 a.m., get ready for work the next day. My boss would pick me up because my broke ass didn't have a fucking car. And then I'd go to work and do it again. And that was just my life all the time. So then how did you, how did you get into fitness? Because you're like, fitness saved my life. Mm -hmm. But what was like the mindset shift? Because there must have been like there has to be a turning point, yeah. right? You don't just wake up one day and you're like, nope, I'm gonna go lift 150 pounds. Like there, <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Well, 150 pounds is not a lot of weight. Um, but uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <For me. laughs> when it comes down to it, uh, honestly, there was like a lot of different things. So like, um, have you guys ever dealt with abuse, like uh, like addiction or alcohol abuse or anything in the past? You guys ever dealt with that? 
So usually when you start to go down a path, there's like little telltale signs. Like you'll have one night where you go a little bit too far and you wake up and you have that regret or there's the embarrassment or there's this. And honestly, it just started to pack on in my life. There was so many little things that like, even to this day, I don't like utilizing the word regret a lot, but I regret it and I wish it didn't happen. I'm glad that I went through it because it turned me into this individual. Uh, but there was a lot of things that just kept stacking. And there was one night that I'll never forget. And it was one of my, one of my best friends back home, they recorded me and I was blasted. Like I had chugged half a bottle of absinthe. I had chewed three per Percocets with them not even knowing what was going on. Um, and I don't remember. I just remember blacking out and then they showed me the video in the morning. I didn't want to see it. So I was like, fuck off. No, I'm like avoiding it. And they're like, okay, we'll just play it for you. So I heard myself. And when I heard myself, it just broke me. I felt like just disgusted and fucking embarrassed and like just so many different emotions. Um, and it didn't just change overnight. Like it wasn't like, okay, the next day, yeah, I'm just going to fucking do this. It was like, that just kept staying there. So then the next time I would get high, that thought was there. The next time I would get drunk, that thought was there. Um, and it happened for a while until I honestly don't know what the exact turning point was, but there was like one day where I was thinking about doing it. I started to run out of Percocets. I didn't have my dealer anymore. And it reached, I just was like eating Robaxis set by like, handfuls of 12 and like different things to try to deal with the pill sickness i couldn't find them and i was like okay whatever anything else that i had in the house i dumped down the toilet and i was like i'm just going to try to change my life here and i cut everything out cold turkey wow wow mm -hmm. and it worked yeah and then it was just i was like okay well i can't control my bank account because i'd racked up like a fifteen thousand dollar debt with a loan because i didn't have enough money to buy a car because all my money from iron working went straight to drugs and drinking um, my credit cards were racked like two to four grand up. So everything was just kind of piling on me. I couldn't control anything else in my life, but I was like, I can control what I put in my fucking mouth. Like I can control what I put in my mouth and what I do with that comes out of my fitness goals on a daily basis. So that's what I'm going to do. And I just started to like slowly work on stuff, buy like eBooks online, like bought a couple mm -hmm. of courses and then just started to work out. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. Like, I think there's so many people probably listening to this who are, maybe stuck, right? And so what advice do you have? Is it, you just have to get into fitness? Is that, is that what really, like obviously there was the, like the low moment for you, mm -hmm. right? I think it's just like, yeah. fitness is the start of everything. Yeah. Like if you're not taking care of your body, you're not gonna get anywhere. And this is why I'm, I'm so gung-ho and like so ruthlessly intense with my message when it comes down to that. Like if you can't even go look in the fucking mirror and be happy about what you see, good luck starting anything. Mm, that's you're just not gonna get anywhere. Because like, let's say we're sitting down right now. If I wasn't happy with my body, I'm not gonna listen to you talk and be picking my fucking shirt like a loser. And like, I'm just not scared to say it how it is and like say it exactly what it is. I'm not gonna be present with you guys. I'm gonna be sitting here like, what's going on? I'm gonna be like hiding this, like moving around and it's just not gonna benefit us in any way. So I'm just very hyper aware of like, of my surroundings and like how I feel. I literally embody the, the corny saying that I'm sure you guys have heard that look good, feel good from mm -hmm. when you're a kid. Mm -hmm. We used to say that all the time when we were children. Um, and I just think it's very important. Like fitness is the foundation of fucking everything. Hmm. I saw, or I heard you talk about an Instagram post that you made actually, um, you know, speaking of these lows, low moments, uh, where you talked about how you didn't think you would live until you were 25. Mm. Is that true? Yeah, there was, um, so the, the breakdown was, I didn't think that I would live past the age of 25. And I talk about this a lot, not because like I was in the gangs or any of that other shit. It was just like, I didn't have a fucking purpose. It literally reached a point in my life where I would like get home, sit on the couch and I had no one. I had my family, but again, I'm not very close to my family. So even when I was staying with them, there was always this weird feeling like, like we weren't connecting, like talking, being open with each other. It was like, let's flex here and talk about this and not like be real. And it reached a point where I was like, there was times I literally sit on the couch and I'm like, why the fuck am I here? Mm. Like, I don't want to be here anymore. And it wasn't because I was like sitting there thinking about like, okay, how do I take my life? And like, what's the next step here? I just didn't know what was going on. And I just realized that I was headed down a dark path in a way of like, again, when I, you put drugs in front of me, didn't know what, didn't matter what it was, I'd take all of it. Like, I remember I'd go to a rave or a party and people pull out M and I would do half the fucking thing, 10, 15 grams in one sitting because that was just my mindset. I'm like, fuck it. Let's have a good time. I'm not living for tomorrow. I'm living for right now. And even though I live like that now, it's more of like in present what's going on instead of trying to escape my fucking reality. That's fair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is uh, the best business advice you've ever 
ever had? Uh, the best business, business advice that I've ever gotten was don't listen to people that are not where you want to be. And it's a very like basic, simple breakdown, like a basic, simple question. But the reason why I love that piece of advice so much is because, and I always like bringing it back to this, let's take school, for example. In the most raw way possible, if you go into an entrepreneurship class in college, you're a fucking idiot. Because that person is not an entrepreneur and they have no idea what the fuck they're talking about. Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. You got people teaching business and how to start and run your own business that are fucking teachers and failed at everything they've done. And I'm no hate on them. Like, dope, you're teaching. I love teaching. It's what I do. I'm a coach. But why the fuck are you listening to people that are not doing what you want to do? Again, it's like taking fitness advice on how to shred for a show mm -hmm. from an obese person who's never worked out a day in their life. What mm -hmm. the fuck are we doing here? I'm not going to listen to somebody how to fix my car when they don't even own a fucking car and have never worked on one in their entire life. Like, it's just a simple breakdown that I feel like a lot of people can try to attack from different angles, but the truth is the truth, and that's just how it is. That's the simplest thing that I can go over. Okay. Yeah, that's solid advice. I've heard you say, uh, if, you know, if you want to lose weight, stop hanging out with people that eat McDonald's every day. <laughs> it's true, man. Like, you want to lose weight, and everybody's like, yo, let's go to fucking Mickey D's and let's eat fucking McDonald's every day. And I'm like, what? No wonder you can't lose fucking weight, guy. Like, look at your surroundings. Your surroundings will make and break everything. Like, um, Dan Pina, yeah. he says the breakdown, like, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. It is, like, the most real quote in the world. And now, like, I, I cut out drugs and alcohol because I stopped fucking hanging out with the people that were feeding me drugs and alcohol. And it's not their fault that I became an addict. It was my own. Mm -hmm. And I'm very self-responsible in that aspect. I'm the one who picked up the fucking pills. I'm the one who like drank the bottles every goddamn night. It's not their fault that that happened. It was me. But I wasn't able to get out of that fucking life until I stopped hanging out with the fucking losers that only wanted to do that. And when I look at everyday life, when I look at the world, when I look at achieving something, it doesn't make sense to me to just work, to drink, to sleep, to work, mm -hmm. to watch TV, to drink, to sleep. What the fuck are we doing? So I just stopped hanging out with any motherfucker who wanted that as a life because I'm like, yo, respect to you. Have a good one. That ain't for me. Like, we're not on the same fucking level here. I want to impact worlds. You want to watch TV. Mm -hmm. I'm good. I like fucking shows too, like The Office and Friends and whatever. <laughs> But I'm not going to sit down and watch it every fucking day for the rest of my life. I want to live my own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. So next question I have is, uh, what advice do you have for people who are like stuck? They could be stuck in like a job or like a lifestyle that mm -hmm. is terrible for them. Like what advice do you have for those people? Well, if you're stuck in a lifestyle, you need to audit the individuals around you and then make a change. Like that's number one. Like if you're in a lifestyle, it's usually because the individuals around you are influencing you on some level. And I think if you want to change your situation, you need to audit your circle in order to get the fuck out of it. Um, but if you're stuck in a job, like if you just want to change your situation, you need to audit what is going on. And I'm like a, a massive advocate of just self auditing everything on a continual basis. I literally actually just gave this advice to my little brother, Danon. So he just passed four, uh, his four years of nursing. He was amped up, graduated. It was like a big celebration, lit. Came to Alberta because my whole family moved from Ontario, lived with me for six months, and was like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, this is bullshit. He's like, you do whatever you want. I was like, why am I going to like this nursing every day? So he's like, what do I do? I told him to write down 10 things he was passionate about. He like looked at the list. He's like, yeah, I like all these things. I'm like, awesome, now pick the top five. He's like, well, fuck. And then he's like, uh, and he like started crossing them out. And then I was like, now close your eyes, I'm like just breathe. Let all the thoughts disappear. Now open your eyes and look at that sheet. What's the first word you see? And it was like programming. And he loves doing programming and website development. And like he wants to build video games when he's older. I'm like, let make money with that in the first six months. He's like, okay. He just dove into it. And he literally went all in. He quit his job. He's got like six months of savings built up. And he's actually landed his first two jobs already. Oh, that's incredible. Like running with it. And the reason why I broke that down is because right now, if you're currently in a situation that you fucking hate, if you hate your job, if you hate what you're doing on a continual basis, audit it and figure out what you actually want to do. Like Gary Vee is always using this, again, like people say corny advice of like, do what you love. It's fucking true. Mm -hmm. Like, I think there's two sides of the coin because there's other speakers, other people who say like, it's not just about what you love. It's about like making the money and getting out of it. My goal is doing what I fucking enjoy so I can actually enjoy the life that I'm fucking living. Now, 
don't get me wrong, I want to make a lot of fucking money with it. So I'm also going to figure out how I can monetize it and operate at a higher level. But I did all of what I'm doing right now by number one, auditing my circle and getting rid of the fucking losers that were dragging me down. Two, asking myself what I actually fucking enjoy. The only thing that I enjoyed at the time was fitness because it, without it, I would have been dead. Like I would have died. There's no other way around it. I was driving in massive boom lifts and like the big lifts that come up and build these skyscrapers and everything blasted, just absolutely fucked out of my mind. Like there was it, inevitable that there was a certain amount of time I was going to get fucking fucked up, hurt somebody else, kill somebody or kill myself. And it was just headed down a dark path. So I got into fitness and then I figured out how to optimize it. I was like, I love this. I now love how I look. I love how I feel. I love what I do. How can I help those people feel the same way? Especially when it came down to construction. Those are the first clients that I had. Mm -hmm. All the people that hated their lives and saw me quit, saw me start to step on stage, saw me transform, saw me look better in the mirror. They're like, how the fuck did you do that? So I started to teach them and help them. I just didn't do it for free. I figured out a way to monetize my passion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's solid advice. And it's crazy too, because when I graduated university, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Like mm -hmm. I knew I wanted to start something, but I didn't know what. So I started the same thing. I wrote yeah. down a list of my passions and I figured I'd write like 20 things. I wrote down two things, yeah. YouTube and fitness, like working out. It's because you don't actually <laughs> like that much. Like a lot of people are like, oh, there's so many things yeah. that you can do. Yeah, actually sit down with a piece of paper and I said 10 things. I don't even think he got 10. I think he got like seven. Yeah, yeah. And the seven, that's why I'm like, awesome. Now scratch out so you only have five. It's like, there's no way. You can come up with fucking words, but when you actually look in your soul, there's only a certain amount of things that you actually fucking enjoy. And there could be like a breakdown where you're like, I only enjoy watching TV. Dope, figure out a way to monetize it. Mm -hmm. There's fucking YouTube channels on the internet right now that just regurgitate TV shows mm -hmm. that you can't even find on Netflix anymore and they make bank. Yeah. There's a way to monetize everything in 2022. And if you're not doing it and you're living a life that you hate, you're an idiot. I don't know how to fucking break it down. Like, I, I'm not even trying to sound smart. <laughs> Wake the fuck up. Like, everybody can be living their dream life right now. And if you're not, it's your fault. Yeah, very true. Very yeah. true. What's the best life advice you've ever been given? Best life advice I have I've ever been given? Mm. It doesn't need to happen by tomorrow. Mm. I feel like that was another thing. When I uh, got my life around, mm. all right, I'm a fucking fitness coach now, I'm making money. All right, got my girl out of her job. I'm like, I've won three shows, first and overalls. I'm feeling like a fucking king. I'm like, hell yeah. I'm like, I'm gonna become an IFBB pro by fucking age of 26. I'm gonna make a million dollars by fucking next year. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit a million followers on social media. I had like 20K at the time on Instagram and it plateaued forever. Um, I had like all these goals and it was like next year. And I had so much fucking anxiety. Like I was so like overwhelmed by everything that it was just stopping me. All right, I wouldn't work because I was anxious about what might happen or what might not happen, even though the only reason why I was anxious in the first place is because I was thinking about shit that didn't even fucking happen. That's how anxiety kicks in. So it was just this big, again, hamster wheel of bullshit. Mm -hmm. And then I was having a conversation with somebody and they talked about how they were thinking in like years, not just months. They were thinking like years, five years, decades away. And when I started to hear that, it was not even like they told me, like, you don't need to see success by tomorrow, but it was like I learned that understanding and having the conversations with people. Um, so that was, that's what it would be it. Yeah. I stopped trying to be everything I wanted to be by the age of 25, by the age of 26, by the age of 27. I just knew I'd get there. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, now I've got even bigger goals that I want to achieve, and I just know I'll get there. Even though there's that thought still, like, I feel like all of us have it. Like, oh, I need to hit my 32. Like, I don't want to be, mm. I used to say this all the time. I'm like, I don't want to be the rich guy. When I was 65 driving the fucking nice car. That's lame as shit. And then the older I'm getting, I'm like, dude, when I'm that guy and see people say I'm lame, I'm gonna be like, go fuck yourself. Have fun in your Honda Civic, bro. All right, like, you know what I'm talking about though? That's what everybody thinks. I don't wanna be the guy driving the Lamborghini when I'm 70. Why not? That's dope as shit. I wanna be that guy. I want Lambos like that. So I just stopped thinking it needed to happen by tomorrow uh, through just listening and understanding, all right, more successful people's conversations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so you're incredibly disciplined, incredibly passionate. Um, have there ever been times where you're just like, crap, I don't want to do it today. Today is not my day. Today is, so then what is the, either the thought or the saying that you say to yourself that gets you going? Stop being a fucking bitch. <laughs> That's literally the thought. I'm like, it's not even like a big motivational statement or anything like that. 
Number one, there's a lot of days where I don't feel like happy, I don't feel motivated, I don't want to get out of bed, I don't want to do the shit that I'm fucking doing. But, all right, I take two paths there. Number one, do I actually need to be compassionate with myself because I've been going strong for six months straight and my body's shutting down? If that's the case, I might sleep in a little bit. I might allow myself a fucking break. I might do a rest day like I should be doing, which I usually don't fucking do, and then it destroys my body. Like, I take the compassionate route when it's needed. Every other side is don't be a fucking bitch. Like, I wake up at 3.30 a.m. every fucking day. Cold shower, affirmations, gratefuls, journaling, meditation, gym. Then I do cardio. And while I'm doing my cardio, I do my content creation. And that's usually all done before 6.30 a.m. when people are opening their fucking eyes. And the reason why I do that is because that's what works for me. Like, I'm not even saying, like, the reason why I do that is because I want to be more successful than your fucking bitch ass. That's not where we're going. Like, that's not the path here. I figured out that I got so busy, all right? I was so busy with clients, so busy with my wife, so busy with the second job and then getting the gym and then trying to do content and posting all my own shit because I don't get somebody to do that for me. I got so busy that there was two paths. Make excuses for why I was getting fucking fat and I couldn't lose my weight and achieve my goals or figure out a way to change it. Because again, even though I found fitness, I got my ups and downs. I let myself fucking go multiple times because then business came and I started to focus on this. You guys know how it is. You get an imbalance sometimes. It reached a point where I was like, I need to change. And I was always about that early life. Like, fuck that, man. I'm not waking up before 5 a.m. I was that guy. And then I was like, I either go at 9 p.m., but I'm fucking exhausted and I'm dying right now. Or I wake the fuck up earlier and just get everything done before 6.30 a.m., and then work starts. And now it's usually I'm up at 3.30 and I work until 6 p.m. And then 6 to 9, 9.30, I hang out with the wife. And then I go to bed at like 10, 9.30 sometimes, get five hours of sleep and I'm gonna go. Mm -hmm. That's it. This whole operate eight hours of sleep bullshit is trash. I had five, six hours of sleep a night and I just keep going. Why? Because this work ethic that I have right now retired my wife and the fact that we're about to have a baby in a week and a half now allows her to be home. Mm -hmm. Why? Because this work ethic allowed us to buy a house that is literally insane compared to what I grew up in. With that being said, actually, I want to share something with you guys that fucking like broke me um, to my core today. Um, I was reading it to my videographer, Jax, on the way over. I'm not very close to my parents. I went through a lot of abuse, a lot of shit fucking growing up. But my dad came and visited with my mom uh, a couple weeks ago for Thanksgiving and for the baby shower. And when he was here, he's like, it's crazy that as a third generation, this is like, this is what you've done. And I had no idea what that meant. I was like, what are you talking about? I'm like the third generation, can you explain? I asked him today and he texted me. And he's like, well, Cole, what that means is that your grandparents from living in a stone house with stone walls and a dirt floor with the walls being not even sturdy, came to Canada, not understanding any English until the age of 50, to provide a life for us, and then us going into the construction industry, barely making it by just so we could do 50% better than our parents, to you now living in a million dollar home, impacting thousands and thousands of lives, earning seven figures. You've taken our name from sleeping on the dirt to million dollar mansions in the course of three generations, and our ancestors would be proud of you. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that is why I work so hard. Cool. Like that, I literally got goosebumps yeah. right now. I'm like, yeah, that yeah, is why yeah. I yeah. Fucking grind. So deep, yeah. I'm not about this complaining bullshit. People complain about their situation and do nothing about it, and it makes no fucking sense to me. I'm like, even, and I've got, even got to turn it off sometimes because this is like actually who I am. My wife will start complaining, and my brain is instantly like, okay, babe, let's do this. Okay, babe, let's do this. Like, let's go this, this way. And she's like, shut the fuck up. Like, I don't want to, I don't want you to fix it. Just listen. And I'm like, okay. And I try to listen, but I'm like, it starts triggering. It's also a big reason why, on the flip side of it, there's some times where I get very dark. I go into a hole and I become a, like a very quiet, like dark human being because I don't share, because I don't like bitching and complaining. But again, this work ethic that I have, the discipline that I've developed over just understanding my purpose has helped me achieve everything and impact so many lives that it's, it's just worth it on every level. If I didn't do this, I wouldn't be changing people's lives every day. How do you get out of that dark hole? By just understanding that the next level is going to help me fucking achieve even more. By understanding that if I don't show up, then somebody online is not going to hear me and they're going to get sent down a dark path. 
by understanding that if I miss, then my wife doesn't eat. My future child experiences what I experienced as a kid, which、uh, will never happen. There's no fucking way. I would die before I let that happen. Like, I just look at if I miss, then all the things, all the people around me relying on me are now going to experience something that I refuse to allow them to experience. That's a lot of pressure, but pressure. I put it on me for a reason because pressure builds fucking diamonds.、Mm-hmm. Very true. Nice. I like that.、Uh, take us back to your morning routine. I know you went through it pretty quick there.、Mm-hmm. I got your day. What about that morning? You listed off a whole bunch of things there.、Mm-hmm. Could you break that down a bit? Yeah. So、um, up at 3 30 a.m. All right. Now I say every day, I'm trying to get in on the weekends. All right. Usually I'll get up around like 5 a.m. on the weekends. If not a little bit earlier, I do not like sleeping in until seven till nine. The only reason t- that usually ends up happening is if I've like slayed my workouts, everything all week, and my body's actually exhausted. Even that, I like waking up early because then I don't need to get back in the routine.、So、if you're 3 30 a.m. Monday to Friday, and then you're like 9 a.m. Saturday, Sunday, we're not getting anywhere. So 3 30 a.m. every day.、Um, cold showers actually started because of the iron working.、Mm-hmm. Um, I still have mad pains in my forearms. And it, there said some people say carpal tunnel, some people say arthritis. I don't even know those, those are the same thing, so get off my ass.、Um, they say a bunch of shit. Long story short, the only thing that's ever helped is CBD. And I could get、uh, surgery in the future. I know other people have got it, but it can mess with my head, so I'm just trying to deal with it. So I do cold showers because I lift in the morning. And if I don't do a cold shower, my body is very swollen. Like, as an example, this is a size 13 ring. If I. Don't shower in the morning with a cold shower to get my body's circulation moving. I can't get this on my finger.、Mm-hmm. Like, my body's just so fucking swollen in the morning and it like, hurts when I try to lift and I can't grip the weights. So, it's just an alternative to help me with my fitness goals.、Uh, then I do affirmations. So, I usually write down seven to ten affirmations and I don't usually like just write them down. I voice note it into my phone and I try to make it just ridiculously long. Like, just get it all out everything I'm feeling, everything I want to fucking produce, everything I want people to hear. Um, on a deeper level, then I go do through gratitudes because I think it's very important in order to level up and become the individual you want to become, you need to appreciate the shit that you already fucking have. Like on a deeper level, and I'm talking about like the little shit, like the little shit. A lot of people want to make a million dollars, but they're not even grateful that they have one running water.、Mm-hmm. So then they complain that their life is so fucking hard when there's people literally walking miles with water on their fucking head. Doesn't make any sense to me. So I'm like, I try to bring down everything grateful. And every day I do something else. I've also taken、um, a part of my mentor, Bedros Kulian's morning routine. He sends out three gratitude tasks, texts.、Mm-hmm. So now I'm starting to do that because not only does it make me feel good, because it reminds me of what I have, these individuals around me, but it starts their day at will because they get that, they get like the thank you. They get like a fucking burst of good feelings in the morning.、Um, then I do meditation. Now I used to do the fucking um shit. Like, try to do it. I hate it. I like it. I literally, it's so hard to do, but it teaches you the lesson in order to control your thoughts and like cut out all the noise because the world just wants to barrage you with bullshit. It wants to barrage you with bullshit. So I do a meditation, but I do a meditation to a YouTube video w h e n I'm on diversity or usually a, what is it? It's a breakdown that I heard in the past. I don't remember the name off the top of my head. It's just saved in my playlist every day. I just put on a video. If it's like 11 minutes long, 30 minutes long, doesn't matter. I turn it on and I drive to the gym. And the entire time I'm driving to the gym, I'm just visualizing my future, visualizing this, visualizing the next things, visualizing what I want to achieve. If I get to the gym, the video's not done, cars in park, and、um, I just lean back, eyes closed, listen to it.、Mm-hmm. And all I'm doing is controlled breathing the whole time. Just control my breathing, listening to the voices, listening to the breakdowns, listening to them talk. And usually, again, it's savage shit. I'm not listening to like some spiritual hippy dippy bullshit. I'm listening to like a guy who speaks like me go off about shut the fuck up, get the work done. I don't care how you're feeling because that's, that's me. That's how I break it down.、Um, then after meditation, I do a workout. So I usually work out for anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. I just hired a new coach. The programs are a little bit different. So I'm trying to make my workouts longer, even though they're getting shorter based off the new training style. Then I'll usually do cardio, but it's not like crazy. A couple, 10, 20 minute walk. And、then on that walk, I'll get my content ready. I'll plan out all the TikToks, YouTube shorts,、um, reels, and more that I want to post that day. And then I message my team. So, in PG Domination, our business coaching program, we have 50 employees,、uh, multiple individuals all over the place. So, I message them, contact them, make sure that I get the flow going for the morning. 
and then that's basically like 6 30 and all that's done yeah 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 that's a wicked morning mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a solid morning a lot of people get up you know uh have some breakfast that's my morning routine yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no yeah, legit yeah. actually yeah yeah yours is pretty intense no, mine's too intense. i gotta work yeah, on mine mine's intense, yeah. i won't even yeah, go I, into mine <laughs> i can't do the the lazy morning anymore i'm like i that's what it was in the past because mm. i was the guy again like waking up earlier than five i was the guy again and i i still believe this like you do not need to wake up at 3 30 a.m in order to be successful you just don't like it's proven like it, anybody who says i wake up at 3 30 to outwork you to mm -hmm. make more money than you is a fucking idiot they have no idea what they're doing i wake up because it serves me yes yeah because if i don't do that like let's break it down if i don't have my cold shower i feel swollen exhausted lethargic all right if i don't work out in the morning that means i now need, now need to work out at night which also takes away time for my wife and also, by the way, my future child, which I'm about to have, which I've been preparing for. Like all of the things I do serve my purpose and serve my day so I can perform at the highest level possible. Because if I miss, that means I show up to a live stream not 100% energized mm -hmm. good, meaning I let down 1,200 students. If I miss, that means I can't manage my gym with 1,400 members properly. If I miss, I can't be a good business partner, a good friend, a good husband, and more. So I just try to make sure I'm on point all the time. And again, I'm not perfect 365 days a year, but I'm way more on point mm -hmm. than I am not. Sets you up for success, yes. right? Yeah. Got yeah, it. that's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And those gratitude, gratitude texts you send to people, I know Tony Robbins does that too. So that's I like just awesome. started. Yeah. I'm like, it feels so good. I'm yeah, like, I'm doing yeah, it for yeah. selfish reasons. Yeah. Like, I'm like, yeah, that's real. That before, I love yeah. saying thank you. I'm like, I love <laughs> talking to people and like, like making sure they yeah, feel yeah. good. Yeah. But y'all, I love the fucking feeling. I'm like, it's great to like, yeah. because it just gives you perspective shift. Like. A lot of people, again, they feel alone in a dark place, and I get there. I'm like, but sending out those allows me to realize that, like, okay, yeah, you might be putting yourself in this dark place because you don't want to complain, but if you ever needed to, that motherfucker's got you. Mm -hmm. Like, that person's there. They're in your back pocket. They're there for you. You can talk to them. It just makes you feel good. Yeah. All right, rapid fire questions. When you think of the word successful, who is the first person that comes to mind and why? C.T. Fletcher, because he's the individual that helped me change my life. Um, he went from an individual that died on the operating table three times, mother went through absolute fucking hell, to becoming a global fucking icon as himself, not some fake ass book. Hmm. Uh, what book do you recommend? Absolutely none. I don't read books. I'm, I'm, I'm dead serious. I haven't read a book in my entire fucking life. Um, I just listen to like, audiobooks or YouTube channels. Well, I watch a lot of like Andy Frisella. Um, CT Fletcher's content online, not really like personal development stuff. I'm not really into it. Okay, that's fair. That's cool, that's cool. What is something that you believe that other people think is insane? Uh, go surreal. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I feel like a lot of people challenge me on that, and I, I'm terrified of ghosts. I will never challenge you because I have the same fear. They terrify you. They terrify me. Yeah. Oh, I, I'll yeah. challenge you both of you. No, <laughs> no <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> no. <laughs> What's a common misconception people have about you? Um, that I have no compassion or empathy because I'm so straight up and like ruthless with my breakdowns. I feel like there's a lot of individuals that do not think that I can have empathy or I'm compassionate in my breakdown. But again, as soon as you sit down in front of me and actually open your eyes, open your fucking ears, you hear that the love's there. You just got to put your ego to the side and open up your ears for a second. Do you have a favorite quote or a quote that you like live your life by? Um, two. One is unchain your mind from the imprisonment of fear. It's actually a C.T. Fletcher quote and it's tattooed on my ribs. Mm. Um, and the other one is live full, die empty, which is also tattooed on me because I want to live every single day to the fullest so that when I actually do die, I die with no regrets. And unchain your mind from the imprisonment of fear, I feel like is one of my favorite quotes because I was super afraid to be myself as a child due to repercussions of everything else that now I just live without fear at all. What's the worst advice you've ever seen or heard been dispensed in the world? Mm, seen or heard being dispensed in the world uh, that you need to go to school in order to be successful. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's a lot of different things that I could say here, but this is one that I'm seeing just like shoved down so many individuals throats and every successful person I know personally has no more than a high school education. Hmm. And I feel like that advice meant, made sense 25 fucking years ago. But now we're in a new age and you can literally see success like we were saying earlier in anything with the fucking phone that you have in your hand right now. If you just took action, opened up YouTube, you'd be able to make money and learn how to monetize literally any fucking passion, whether it's gaming, clothing, motivational content or anything else. You were telling me this on the way here, but who's your favorite uh, creator that you look up to, you know, other than C.T. Fletcher? Uh, Peter McKinnon. I fucking love his content. He actually is the individual who taught me about lighting and taught me how to talk. And 
kind of gave me the permission to like step into my power because even C.T. Fletcher, even though C.T. Fletcher kind of like showed me what it was like to be able to be raw and real and have the followings and everything back you, um, Peter showed me that I didn't need to have something crazy going on. I didn't need to be skydiving or doing some crazy content over here in order to be entertaining. I just needed to be my fucking self. So both of them kind of allowed me to step into my true power and create content online. Indirectly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see that. Like now that you've mentioned that, I see that in your content mm -hmm. when I watch yeah. your TikToks and mm -hmm. stuff. It's really great camera work and everything and then the delivery and everything. I'm all awesome. you know, learning about that yeah. stuff, dude. Like I'm uh, like kind of going back to the other question as well. When I want to learn something, I will spend like hours, like a disgusting amount of time on YouTube learning and learning and learning. And I'll like, I won't cut into anything I broke down for you guys. I'll sacrifice more sleep. So I'll sleep three hours and then fucking binge watch two hours of content. Like when I, I actually became a gamer for a little bit. I love video games. It's one of the things that I enjoy. I was making money doing Twitch streams within six months. I was making $600 cash because I just listened, built a TikTok following to 45,000 followers on TikTok, started monetizing, driving in traffic and started making cash in gaming like that. Wow. Just because I get hyper aware on learning and like with Peter, he taught me so much about content and lighting and everything else and moving the camera and B-roll. All right. I'm always like saying B-roll. Nobody even knew what it was around me because I just absorb because that's how I take in knowledge. Like a book, when I open it up and I read the, the, the words, it just gives me anxiety. Like I don't understand. Like I'll lose track. My eyes will jump around. Okay. Gives me a little bit of anxiety reading it. So I just found another way to take in knowledge so I can change my life. People yeah. all learn differently too, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it's worked for you, so. What's next? A oh, lot, I don't really know, <laughs> honestly. I'm like, when it comes down to our business coaching program, we want 5,000 students, we currently have 1,200. Mm -hmm. uh, we wanna help 500 hit 10K, we've helped 250,000 break $10,000 a month organically. That's just that side. We would love to fr uh, franchise our gym. It's actually why we hired Bezos Koulian. We'd love to just open up locations all over Canada, maybe in the States. Again, just future goals that we wanna achieve. For myself, it's about the legacy. Like, what's next for me? I don't really know. Like, I've achieved a lot of the goals that I wanted to. I've got the f***ing big house. I've got the R8. I've got the money. I've got the wife. I'm about to have the kid. Like, things are going well, but I'm just not satisfied. Somebody asked me this question. It was actually one of my clients, Caitlin Wilson. She's like, when are you going to be happy with the money in the bank account and the followers on your account? I'm like, never. I'm like, I want all the fucking followers. I want all the fucking money because I want to be remembered forever. So like what's next for me is the next goal. So like even though you're talking about like the million, I know I'm going to hit it and be happy for a day and then be like, okay, cool, bye. Because when I hit 500,000, I felt the same way. Yeah. When I hit 700,000, I felt the same way. I'm like, okay, dope, who cares? Like next thing, next thing, next thing. My big next goal is I want to do like more of this. I want to do stage speaking. I want to get in front of more people because the more people I can get in front of, the more actual generations, that's my term, I can impact. Because if I could speak to a mother, and it changes her perspective, she can change her kids' perspectives and it just trickles down the fucking line. I wanna create this global ripple effect and just start impacting people. What advice would you give uh, a 20 year old or your 20 year old self? My 20 year old self? Yeah. Um, embrace loneliness. This is something I've been saying a lot online lately and I wanna make sure that I nail it home right now. Um, embrace fucking loneliness. This is a statement that I need everybody to understand. If you're listening to this fucking video, listen to this audio, wherever the case may be, a lot of individuals are surrounded by losers that are dragging them down because they don't understand how to be alone. And it's usually because they are terrified of themselves. They don't like the thoughts in their head. They don't understand how to be with themselves. They don't understand how to be with their own company. So they surround themselves with people that are toxic for this situation. So even though you know you really don't want to go to the fucking bar, you go to the bar anyways because you don't want to be alone at home because you don't want to be perceived a certain way by individuals that you don't even fucking like going to the bar with. What the fuck are we doing? Mm -hmm. It just becomes this weird hamster wheel of bullshit. Like, you don't want to go, you don't really want to hang out with the people, but you don't want to be looked at like a bitch, so you go anyways, and then you hate your life, and then you're angry, and then you do, like, it just becomes weird. So, like, the reason why I've embraced or seen the success that I have and developed the discipline that I have is because I was lonely as in that time frame of me being an iron worker, and again, I wish I knew dates. Like I've been trying to go back and like cross-reference, but I deleted so much at the beginning of my fitness journey because I was so fucking disgusted mm. of myself that I like wiped it, and now I'm like an idiot. Like I wish I had it. Um, but like looking back at that, it was just a weird like breakdown. If I would have just 
embrace that loneliness even more, I would have seen success even faster because that loneliness turned me into this person. Like I didn't have anyone to go to the bar with anymore. I didn't have anybody to hang out with anymore. I was like, I was just me. I got off work and no one wanted to be around me because I was fucking just a, a wreck, like a, a fucking liability. And being that liability turned me into the asset that I am now. Why do you think you're able to captivate so many people? It's because I'm real. There's too many fake motherfuckers in this world right now. Like when it comes down to it, I feel like a lot of people are just afraid to offend and I'm just not because I'm not ever attacking you personally. Like I'll never sit down with you personally and just blatantly attack what the fuck you're doing. I might tell you something as like a friend, as even an acquaintance, like you need to change this if you want to level up your life. But I'm not going to sit down and like rip you apart and then just walk away and not care about your outcome because I actually genuinely care about people. But I will take the excuse you keep fucking spewing to me and then go to this camera and fucking scream it to the heavens and like literally go off to the deep end because if you're saying it, that means there's probably 15 people within spitting distance that are saying the same thing. So I take personal things, all right, generalize it, and then I blow it up online in a real way. And there's a lot of people that resonate with it because I'm joining the conversation in their head. Like, even when I was a fitness coach, I did the same thing. There's actually a photo. This is fucking funny. If you guys scroll on my Instagram, you'll see it. Uh, when I was a fitness coach, I wrote on a cardboard sign. I said, you're fucking fat, not big boned. And I fucking put it up on a sign like this, and I stood in Calgary, and I fucking posted it up, and it fucking exploded. And all these self-love activists and everybody else were losing their fucking minds. They were pissed. Um, but the reason why I did it is because at the time, I was a fitness coach for women. women. I had a lot of women coming to me. And I don't know if you got told this when you were younger, but this was a massive trend with women in my program. They all got told by their mothers, Babe, it's all good. You don't need to lose weight. You're just big boned. No, that was never my thing. Like, I had to weigh 120 pounds all yeah. the time. So like, I <laughs> legit, <laughs> it was insane. I like heard it from so many fucking women that I just snapped. I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to say it. I don't even care. My caption was just sorry, not sorry. I didn't even want to explain myself. And it blew up. Like I got a lot of clients from that shit because I was so real. And obviously caught a lot of hate. But I realized very earlier that I'm like, I can't please everyone. You're not gonna like the way I break something down. You might not like the way I break something down, but at the end of the day, I don't give a fuck because there's gonna be somebody on the camera that's gonna hear what I'm saying, it's gonna resonate and it's gonna change their life. And even though the million's cool and I'm very happy for it, uh, we were having a conversation earlier, I'm more focused on the one. Mm -hmm. Because I know if I put out a video that joins the conversation in your head and challenges one of your self-limiting beliefs and stops you from putting a gun in your mouth, which I've actually gotten DMs from, that's my win. That's what the fuck I'm put on this earth to do, to impact lives. And yeah, it might go turbo viral, but at the end of the day, like the numbers are cool and I obviously want that, but I'm more focused on that one. And that's why I'm always in my comment section myself, like going through like what's going on, what are people saying? Like, is there positive feedback? Does this impact people in a deeper way? I think it's just because I'm real. I just want to say things how they're said. That's why I also swear a lot. I don't like beating around the bush. But I feel like you also have like such a great discipline about you. Like even when you were getting clean and you met Brian, you had a very concrete schedule and even moving forward from there, you were very, very disciplined. I try to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it just stemmed from my upbringing and everything else. Mm -hmm. my, me and my family dealt with a lot of uh, anger is usually how I explain it. There was a lot of abuse. There was a lot of anger in my household. There was a lot of crazy shit that happened. But at the end of the day, there was the underlining message of like, if you say you're going to do something, fucking do it. And when somebody else says jump, if they're in an authoritative position, you fucking jump. And I've always been like that. Like I'm a very firm believer in, in, in I am a leader, but at the same time, if I sit down and you know more than me, I'm gonna shut the fuck up and listen. And that's why I've been able to like project my life forward because B was the start of it. He knew more than me, he was able to help me. So I just literally was like, why would I argue? Just do everything he says. And, don't waver because if I waver, the only person I can blame is myself. Mm -hmm. like, I can't get mad at a random stranger for how they treated me when at the end of the day, I treated myself worst first. Like I can't get angry if someone calls me a loser addict if I'm the one doing the fucking pills and acting like a loser. And that's just been my mindset since I was like a kid across the board. I also grew up in a pretty savage household. I'm like, it's yeah. me, two younger brothers, older brother, older sister, and then my parents. All right, just about to wrap. Is there anything else that you want to tell the audience? Yeah, 100%. So I want to talk about a subject that I've kind of been breaking down in my videos and I told you guys earlier, um, and that's about the alternative. 
All right, I feel like a lot of individuals need to pay attention to this and ask themselves that question because there's a lot of you that want to achieve your goals, but you will never look at the alternative. So let's say fitness. Let's take fitness as an example. All right, you want to achieve your goals. You want to lose weight. You want to invest in a coach. But your first fucking question is, what is this going to cost me? What is it going to cost you if you fucking don't? You want to lose 50 fucking pounds and they say it's going to cost you $100 and you're like, ah, I don't really know. But what is that $100 going to cost you if you don't fucking spend it? It's going to cost you all these health problems. It's going to cost you a shorter in life because you didn't take care of yourself. It's going to cost you having to be taken care of by your children. A lot of you guys don't look at the alternative of your fucking choices. All right, you'll always take the easy route out and that is why your fucking life sucks and you haven't been able to achieve your goddamn goals. Cole, where can people find you? So there's a lot of fake accounts out there. So uh, this is my social media breakdowns. All right, on Instagram or TikTok, it is my first, middle and last name. So C-O-L-E-L-U-I-S-D-A-S-I-L-V-A or Cole Lewis De Silva. Awesome. Right. Thanks for joining us, Cole, yeah. on the Motiversity Show. Thanks for bringing me. This is a blast. Yeah. It was a good time. Let's do it again. Mm -hmm. It's great. Yeah. yeah.